In this video, we'll take a look at some Barbie Easter eggs. And I'm not talking about these Easter eggs. Easter eggs are like little hidden references in movies. Disney and Pixar are famous for them. Especially Pixar because they have the Pizza Planet truck in every single one of their movies. But Disney and Pixar aren't the only ones who can do Easter eggs. Let's take a look at some of the Easter eggs in Barbie movies and TV shows. The first Easter egg is in Barbie Princess Power, a 2015 film about a princess named Kara who becomes a superhero after a butterfly kisses her on the cheek. In this scene, Baron's evil frog lifts some stuff out of a box using his tongue, which I thought was kind of weird. But, weirdness aside, did you notice what he lifted out of the box? It was the Nutcracker from Barbie and the Nutcracker, a 2001 film and the first Barbie movie, so I thought it was really cool they did a little throwback to the first ever Barbie film. Number two comes from Barbie Rockin' Royals, which is a 2015 film about two girls who accidentally go to the wrong summer camps. In this scene, Erica Juno, who is a rock star, is trying to call someone to see if she can get out of the princess camp because she just can't take it anymore. Or maybe she was calling someone to get rid of that zebra hair. Either way, if you look on the right side of the screen, on the wall there is a painting of Miss Privet from Barbie Princess Charm School, which is a 2011 film about Blair, who is a waitress and wins the lottery to go to a princess school. The third Easter egg is in Barbie Dreamhouse Adventures, which is a really cute Netflix show that came out earlier this year. In the first episode called Welcome to the Dreamhouse, Barbie and Skipper are spying on their annoying neighbors because they think they might have hacked their house. But then when their neighbors can't even open a pecan with a nutcracker, they decide that they're probably too dumb to hack their high-tech dream house. Even though their neighbors, the Reardons, are not very smart, they do have one thing going for them, and that is their awesome Nutcracker, which again is a reference to the 2001 film. The fourth Easter egg comes from Barbie Life in the Dream House, which is like a mini web series about Barbie and her friends living in the Dream House, but it's kind of like a reality TV show, and they were also like dolls. The Easter egg is in an episode called A Smidge of Midge, and I'm just going to show you the clip. Midge? I can't believe it! Oh, my best old bestie! What a surprise! Surprise? But I sent you a telegram a month ago. So not only is this a little bit of a reference to the 1960s Barbie, it also has another reference, and I'm going to show you the next clip. One evening in Barbie's dream house, surprise! It's Midge, Mattel's marvelous new teenage doll. Midge is Barbie's best friend. So that whole scene was like a little reference to the first ever Midge commercial. I just really loved the way they did that and I was so excited for this episode to come out. So the last Easter egg is in Barbie the Princess and the Pop Star, which is a film from 2012. And to be honest, I was I was trying to find number five and I could not think of anything. And then I was like, wait a minute, Barbie Princess and the Pop Star is like the ultimate Easter egg. So the whole film is about a princess named Tori and a pop star named Kira, and they're just kind of like fed up with their lives, and they get the chance to switch places with magic. I remember when I first saw the trailer for this, and me and my older sister got so mad because we grew up with Barbie, Princess and the Popper. We really thought that Barbie was just running out of ideas, they had to remake their old stuff, especially something that was already kind of a remake because Princess and the Popper is like a remake of Mark Twain's Prince and the Popper, so we were just really mad about this. Looking back, I mean, I get why I was so mad. I was literally convinced I was Erica, and so I thought they were not going to do it justice at all. And when it came out, I mean, I wasn't that mad. I actually really liked the movie, but I think I have a better appreciation for it now. Especially because they actually did like a really good job redoing one of the songs and I'm just gonna show you guys the clips of that To be a princess is to know which spoon to use To be a princess is a thousand pairs of shoes To be a princess is to know which spoon to use To be a princess is a thousand pairs of shoes Bend from above and always wear your gloves and wave. Shoulders back and tummy in and piggy out and lift the chin and slowly turn the head from side to side. I see now. Bend from above and always wear your gloves and wave. Shoulders 
slowly turn your head from side to side. Breathing gently, stepping lightly, smile brightly, nod politely. Never show a thing you feel inside. Glide! Breathing gently, stepping lightly, smile brightly, nod politely. Do everything you do with pride. Glide! So I actually really like the way they redid the song since they gave it a modern twist because The Princess and the Popper takes place centuries ago and The Princess and the Pop Star takes place in modern time. In this video, I just chose clips with the same lyrics as the original movie, but throughout the song, there are a lot of lyric changes. Even in one of the clips on this video, it changes from never show a thing you feel inside to do everything you do with pride. I don't think this lyric change is trying to call out the old movie or anything. They also changed some of the lyrics to have things like Manny Petties in them, so it was more of a modern twist on the song. In my opinion, the lyric when it says, never show a thing you feel inside, might actually be a Julian thing, because he's in love with Princess Annalise, but since he's just a commoner and he's not very wealthy, he doesn't want anyone to really know. And Erica is like the first person that kind of gets the hint about it. And can we just take a sec, like Julian is the most pure person ever, and it's just honestly really sad he thinks he has to hide his feelings like that. But I think in the end, you know, he realizes Annalise actually loved him the whole time, and it all works out. So back to the references, the other half of the Princess and the Pop Star version of the song is about how to be a pop star. And I think it's cool that they added that, you can see both of the girls' lives and that, and they can kind of teach each other how to be each other. Well, those are all the Barbie Easter eggs I have today. If there are any Barbie Easter eggs you saw that I didn't point out, please leave a comment. Let me know what you'd like to see in other videos. And also, let me know if you liked Barbie Princess and the Popper or Barbie Princess and the Pop Star better. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.